Hello and welcome to Bite Size Revision for Contract Law. The topic today is vitiating factors. You can find a longer version of this video and my lesson on my YouTube channel. Do you remember what a representation is? A representation is a statement that encourages a party to enter into a contract. How is a misrepresentation defined? It is defined as a false statement of material fact made by a party to the contract that induces or encourages the other party to enter the contract. What effect will a vitiating factor have on a contract? It is something that makes the contract void or voidable, meaning the contract will not continue, unless the claimant who is claiming a misrepresentation wishes for it to continue. A misrepresentation in English law is defined as a false statement seen in the Spice Girls and the Prillia World Service BV case. It is of material fact seen in the Bissett and Wilkinson case. It is made by a party to the contract seen in Payment and Lanjani. And finally, it induces or encourages the other party to enter the contract, seen in Atwood and Small. Misrepresentation can be further defined in three different types. Firstly, there is a fraudulent misrepresentation. This is a statement that is false in order to deceive. Lord Herschel, in the case of Derry and Peake, defined it as being knowingly false, without belief in its truth, or recklessly, carelessly, as to whether it is true or false. The second type is called negligent misrepresentation. This is a statement carelessly made without checking facts. There are two actions in law. The first, Headley, Byrne and Heller, can be seen in tort law under a claim for negligent misstatement. The statutory action that can be taken is found under the Misrepresentation Act of 1967. Innocent misrepresentation is a statement that is false, but the party making it does not know this. This can be seen under the Misrepresentation Act again of 1967. If the representation I make to a party about something was true at the time, but the situation later changes, will the person be liable for a misrepresentation? Yes. See the case of With and O'Flanagan. If I make a representation but don't tell the whole truth, in other words, I keep silent or tell half a truth, will this be a misrepresentation? Will I be liable? Yes, see the case of Dimmock and Hallett, and in situations where the party's relationship is based on trust and good faith, particularly insurance cases or financial advisors or lawyers, see Tate and Williamson. A statement of intention by one party claiming that they will do something can amount to material fact and therefore a misrepresentation if it is clear that that party had no intention of carrying out their claim. This is seen in the case of Edgington and Fitzmaurice. Thank you very much.